everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope hopefully everybody's uh, having a great start to the week. Uh, I'm not going to be long because this heat out here in, in, in Houston is not playing any jokes. And I'm pretty sure if I leave this phone propped in this window too long, it's going to overheat. Uh, so I'm going to try to be as succinct as I possibly can in sharing with you what I want to share. First of all, there are two things. Don't forget that we are in the middle of a fundraiser for the work we do at the Odyssey Project. Uh, all the information you need to support the work is in there. For the people who are unfamiliar with the work, there's a link to our official website and all the work we've been doing for years is in there, chronicled. Uh, over almost 700 articles alone and then uh, so much more in resources and programs and everything else that you can see so go uh, if you're not familiar with what we do black men lead and so many other things go check that out um, second of all for those who have probably watched the video I did earlier uh, and you've shown your support and love uh, and for those who have just been showing support and love for the last couple of months, I want to personally thank you for giving me the space to be human in a time that I really need to visit my humanity um, and be able to really experience and feel what I'm going through. Uh, I really want to appreciate it, let you know that I appreciate it and I love every last one of you for the love that you've shown um, over this time. And I will continue to be invested in the work that I do at the highest level I can possibly do it. Uh, but this has definitely been a trying and challenging time for me. Um, and I, again, appreciate your understanding, the love and support you've shown my family um, and the prayers that you've sent up for me and my family. Um, and, you know, hey, tomorrow is a new day new opportunities, new blessings, and they have to be seized. Uh, can't dwell on what has not happened or has happened, but what can happen. So that's where I'm focused. That's where I'm faced. That's what I'm going to do. But I just wanted to take time to say thank you. Now, uh, this is going to be real brief, but I think it needs to be said. I think that I've seen a few people talk about it, but it's not talked about enough. Let me explain something to you. Dr. King wasn't a threat until he realized that integration wasn't the answer and that reparations and underwriting economic viability and economic growth and generational wealth of blacks was the answer. And the demand for reparations is what ultimately ended up in the United States culpability and responsibility for his death proven in a civil court case in 1999 where the U.S. was found to be responsible for the death of uh, Dr. King. Um, he wasn't a threat as long as he was just talking about integrating into their economy, spending our money in their businesses. But when he started talking about cashing that check, when he stopped talking about demanding reparations, it became a problem because they had created, they had allowed him to grow his power base and his following based on him being a buffer and a, and a, and a promoter and advocate of nonviolence. And now he was going to be demanding something they definitely weren't willing to offer. And now here we are, uh, basically 55 years later, uh, 54 years later, 60, yeah, 54 years later, and we're still at the same place. Uh, we haven't crossed the threshold into uh, achieving what he started and most of the time we are spoon fed the more docile version of Dr. King the more uh, let's everybody get along kumbaya version of Dr. King nobody talks about the radical and purposed and intentful Dr. Dr. King the last year or so of his life uh that type of focus is what got him killed. 
I'm saying all that to say it's time out for symbolism. It's time out for every time that we raise the flag of reparations to be symbolically handed something that is supposed to appease us and excite us. So now Juneteenth is a national holiday when if anybody understands the holiday knows that it wasn't a national experience. Juneteenth was specific to slaves in Texas because they didn't get the news that they were free for a whole two years after they were. So Texas got an additional two years out of slaves before they received notification that they were free. And it was supposedly happened, it supposedly happened on June 19th. And being the way that our broken language and everything happened, it ended up being Juneteenth uh, instead of June 19th, but Juneteenth, and it became a celebration in Texas. And now, in order to um, appease black, black discord, black disenfranchisement, uh, black dissatisfaction dissatisfaction they hand you a national holiday Juneteenth which will ultimately be commercialized and they will again use it to cipher money from the black economy instead of answer the call to put money into the black economy that's owed the black economy and I think it's really important that we truly understand that because we get gaslighted so much about reparations uh, the idea that reparations is somehow a handout, that it is somehow us begging for something that we don't deserve. No, we're saying that for 246 years, you got free labor that literally built the core fabric and foundation of this nation. It created the first industrial economy in this nation. And you had 246 years to do that. It was why the U.S. made such a rapid advancement in global power is because of its uh, unparalleled economy because of free labor. Uh, and then you must also uh, add in that our disenfranchisement, our lack of equitable opportunities, our lack of equal access didn't begin in 1865. It has yet to begin. Uh, we, 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 we weren't in a position of equitable, equitable access in the 12 years of reconstruction. We weren't in the position of equitable access doing uh, convict leasing or the black code. We were not in a position of equitable access during the 70 years plus of Jim Crow segregation, we have not yet been in a position of equitable access, access when it comes to uh, gentrification, redlining, mass incarceration, and so many other things, mis miseducation, so many other things that we consistently experience even now. So we are still battling and every last one of these accusations and complaints are worthy of consideration of being uh, restored financially for what we have been robbed of economically. And that is the demand. And until we sit up and look at it right now, uh, most uh, economies that visit uh, this complex dynamic of reparations say that based on inflation based on so many other factors that have to be factored into what we're owed from 1619 to now we're talking on the low end 14 trillion <coughs> and it is my belief that if you are a direct descendant of a slave <coughs> that should be a certain amount given to that family if you are a direct descendant of someone who was actively living in this country doing reconstruction convict leasing Jim Crow redlining regardless then again that should be a certain amount given to that family
And I think those are the things that we are going to have to actively visit if we are going to truly talk about holding this country accountable. It's not about who you're going to vote in. It's not about any of that. It's going to be about us having enough leverage, us executing what we do have in economic power in a way that makes this country feel our presence. This is about economic uh, intelligence. This is about being what we need to be economically um, in a way that our presence is felt. And so that's my thing is don't get caught up in the Juneteenth thing. Uh, I'm from Texas, have been, you know, I'm from Texas. I've lived in a lot of different places but I was born and reared here. Um, so there's an affinity to Juneteenth. Uh, I don't mind sharing it, but it's an affinity. That's something unique about it because I grew up in the state where it was real. Uh, and that's something to that, but I don't have a problem sharing it. But at the same time, that can't be uh, what appeases our thirst for equity in this country. Uh, we've earned it um, and we must demand it and we must not let up on the pressure. We must consistently push forward and, and consistently apply that pressure. And I'm going to leave it at that. I've got to get out, run in here and grab something before I head to the gym. But I definitely wanted to drop that on you. Again, don't forget, we are still in a fundraiser. We would love to have your support. Um, go to the description box, look in there. There's a way to support us. There's also information to learn more about us. There's a link to learn more about us. Uh, again, for all of you who have been showing love, uh, thank you so much. It means the world to me. I'm out of here. Peace.